Okay, my name is Lennart Hardell from Sweden. I'm an oncologist, been working many years in oncology and my research career started actually back in late 1970s, early 1980s when I made cancer studies on the Agent Orange stuff. We had the same type of chemicals in Sweden used in forestry and it turned out to be related to an increased risk for specific types of cancer, soft tissue sarcoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And these studies uh, became part of the Agent Orange uh, trial in the United States and also the basis for compensation to Vietnam veterans for specific cancer diseases. Afterwards, it has, of course, been shown that uh, TCDD, which, which is the major contaminant in uh, Agent Orange, um, is a multi-site uh, carcinogen to humans, so it gives different types of cancer and also other diseases and has been classified as a group one complete uh, human cancer, can, uh, carcinogen by IARC, which was um, uh, decided some 20 years after our initial studies. But there was a growing international body of evidence that uh, TCDD is cancer-causing, as well as Agent Orange, of course, too. We have also made uh, many studies on pesticides related to uh, cancer, mostly on the lymphomas, and uh, one of the pesticides was, uh, besides of these um, Agent Orange herbicides, is um, glyphosate or Roundup. And uh, we found uh, an increased risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma associated with use of Roundup, uh, which has been confirmed in, uh, or rather, I would say, shown in two other studies, one from the United States and one from Canada. And these were one of the bases for classifying glyphosate uh, recently by IARC as a group 2B possible uh, human carcinogen, uh, which is of major impact because this has to do with uh, the gene modification and uh, of course, the Monsanto production of these uh, uh, products and uh, also uh, should have an impact on the use of these uh, compounds like glyphosate because they are freely to be used nowadays. You can buy them uh, in the shop uh, and use as much as you, as you want. Uh, well, since more than 10 years, I've been involved in research on brain cancer and um, the relationship with mobile phones and uh, and uh, goddess desktop phones. And we have found a clear association uh, with an increased risk with such uh, use, which has been confirmed by other studies and were the basis for, again, classifying by IARC as a possible uh, human carcinogen group 2B in May uh, 2011. And we have continued with uh, such research. Uh, well, I have not really done research uh, much on electrohypersensitivity by myself, but uh, I have followed the literature and it's clearly uh, that the evidence is there that this is a real disease which is related to, uh, to exposure to electromagnetic fields uh, and uh, these people need, need to be recognized as uh, diseased and uh, not uh, like a psychiatric uh, disorder, uh, which uh, many doctors by now tend to say, oh, this is psychology, this is psychiatric disease, you need to have cognitive uh, treatment. Instead, they need to be carefully taken uh, con um, care of in, in the uh, hospitals and what we now during this uh, conference address is the need for diagnostic criteria and also that they should have a, a international code of diseases like other diseases and ICD code and uh, uh, because that would facilitate for uh, for uh, physicians to to uh, treat these patients and take uh, them seriously because as long as you don't have a, a diagnosis, it's um, easy to dismiss them because say, uh, okay, you, you don't have a, an established diagnosis. And I know the problem is, of course, that the symptoms can be specific for different individuals and uh, that there is by now no established criteria for, for, for establishing the diagnosis. We need 
to establish the symptoms and also to have biological markers. And from that we need to go on to have WHO to accept this as a disease and also to establish uh, treatments. But the, yeah, I've seen uh, some of the results and they are very interesting, really. So, uh, yeah, yes, uh, these uh, markers may contribute to a diagnosis in the future because uh, he has looked in different separate markers but also a combination of markers and, and finds that uh, several of the markers are increased in electrohypersensitive persons. Uh, sorry to. Uh, yeah, these uh, studies are made by Professor uh, Belpom in, in Paris, and he has been studying some 1,000 patients with uh, mostly with electrosensitivity, but also with uh, multiple chemical sensitivity or a combination of these uh, tools. And, and uh, he finds markers that can be useful in the future for this patient category. But uh, we need also um, have education of um, uh, the persons in the society so that they can uh, get more knowledge because most people think that there is no problem with the electromagnetic fields. We need also uh, education of medical doctors in the future.